Okay, hello everyone, welcome back. Um, I apologize if I look like I am absolutely dead exhausted, it is because I am. Um, unfortunately, my son, who has a bunch of health issues, um, got himself admitted to the hospital last night, and so I spent the night sleeping on what felt like a sheet of uh, plywood. So, I hurt, I'm tired. Um, the good news is my son is now home, um, doing better, thank goodness. Um, just one of those things with the joys of having a little kid and especially one with a lot of health concerns. So um, tonight's stream may end up getting cut a little short. Um, my plan is to uh, poke more at the material design stuff. I'd like to get the um, 310 release out the door. There's a bunch of stuff in there. Um, I usually note that when I start getting duplicate issues it means that I've gone too long without a release and so that's probably the time where I need to start um, pushing stuff out the door. Um, and just rev the revision and keep going. So I'm going to look at that because there's a bunch of things in the milestone that should be easy fixes, um, but quite frankly, they just require a little bit of time to look at and to merge in. So we're going to try and do that tonight. So let's switch over here. Do, 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 that button. Okay. So back to where we left off. Uh, so in the pull request pipeline, this one actually interests me the most at the moment. So we've got an automated um, Azure DevOps pipeline that goes through and updates our icons from the material design icons every night. So it goes out, checks if there's new stuff. If there is, creates a pull request that I can then review and usually just blindly merge. Um, the interesting part here is an auto-generated pull request ha is failing, which is um, definitely not normal um, because this was auto-generated um, and so this one actually caught my eye. I meant to look at it last night but when you're sleeping in a hospital there's not a lot of time to look at pull requests mostly because people keep interrupting you every 10 to 15 minutes. Um, okay so I kinda wanna just dive out to Azure DevOps and look at what this failure is. So unit test failed, one test failed, Let's see, so enu members must differ, uh, must not differ by only case. Okay, so basically the pack icon that it generated has two members that differ by only case. Excellent, this is what we want. This guy should catch these bugs. Um, basically, this is a problem because of XAML. Um, XAML defaults to case insensitive, and so if you've got two enu members in your pack icon, um, and they only differ by case. When you specify one in your XAML, it gets very confused and can't figure it out. Um, and you end up getting weird errors. So the solution to this is we just don't allow it. So, meh. But the question is, we don't allow it. How the heck did we generate into this case? So, step one. Let's go and just check out the... <sighs> the branch that this is on. So the, the Azure DevOps pipeline always creates this branch in the pipeline's icons. And so we're just going to go and check him out and see, because we should be able to just replicate this by rerunning the unit tests. After all, this is why we have our unit tests, so that I don't accidentally break stuff. It might be a little overkill to run them against all the frameworks, but yeah. But rather be safe than sorry. Most of these things run fairly quick. Ooh, ReSharper has an update. I probably shouldn't install that right now. It's generally a bad idea to be installing software in the middle of a presentation. Usually. Um, the other thing, um, there's been a lot of requests that I've gotten around um, unit testing and code structure. Um, I had hoped to say that there was a new video out. Um, I spoke at a user group last week um, on that very topic. Um, and unfortunately, the recording um, from that, uh, the audio got dropped. So that is unfortunate. Um, and I, I'm trying to decide what to do about it. Um, part of me wants to just take one of these streams and basically redo that presentation um, and just rehash it because it's probably about 90-ish minutes long. Um, and uh, just go through and effectively re-record it on stream and, and walk through it that way. So that might be the, the next one. If I, if I get enough requests of people saying, yeah, we want, we want that content, I might go through and do it. I do have a copy of the video. I thought about having fun and just trying to basically um, 
re-record the audio over the top of it. Um, don't know how practical that actually is, um, but I might try it just for the fun of it because I'd kind of like to see how this goes. Okay, so enum member. So text box exa matches existing. So there's two things that have the title of text box. Okay, so let's jump and look at pack icon kind. Why, why do I have two things called text box? So I have a hunch. So there, oh. So I have this and this. That's not a good thing. Because now I have to try and decide which one of these we actually care to keep. I do not like being put in this position. Um, and usually what I found is that a lot of times when these sort of duplicates come through, um, it's usually um, because we're pulling the latest and greatest stuff from the material design icons, I don't necessarily wait for their releases. So to some degree, you could argue that this data is uh, effectively beta that we're pulling through. Um, so some of this may just disappear. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm more interested in checking out why why we were able to generate this e new member in the first place. So inside of the material design um, stuff, there is this uh, material design resource generator. Uh, there was a solution file for it, though. Yeah. So we're going to pop this guy open and figure out why why he's able to generate that. Because I'd love to I'd love to understand exactly what's going on there. But thank goodness for unit tests and saved me from accidentally merging in something that would cause somebody an error. Which is great. That's exactly what we want them to do is guard me from myself. There was a question that came up in my user group talk, um, specifically kind of around this case of, uh, in general, there's a, a guiding principle that says that in your unit tests, um, you should avoid things like um, loops and conditions. So don't have loops, don't have if statements, right? Um, and, and the basic rationale for that is that every time you add one of those in, it adds an implicit way for your unit test to um, pass incorrectly. Right? That's that's the worst possible case. You never want a unit test passing when it should be failing. Like you want it to fail when there's a failure case. Um, and, and to go kind of along with that, you run into this case of uh, what about using reflection to verify things in unit tests? And I don't necessarily take a hardline stance um, on it. Some people go, would say absolutely not. This is not how you should do this. This should be a data-driven test, and yada yada yada. Um, I, I personally think that this is just fine the, the way that it is. I don't mind using reflection in loops like this. The big thing is making sure that the, you can guarantee that the test is doing what you think it's doing. Um, because if you have conditions in there, you now have to answer the question, how do I know that my test is actually working correctly? Um, and so in this case, because it's literally just iterating over enum get names, I'm really, really confident um, that this thing is working. Um, there, there's checks that you can put in Azure DevOps to say, hey, I expect the, this is the minimum number of tests I expect to be executed. So you can guarantee that if you accidentally like mess this up and instead of iterating over you know, 10,000 items, I only do it once. So um, in general, I'd say it's still a good guiding principle to avoid conditions and loops, um, but then to use them sparingly and when you do um, it should invoke a lot more scrutiny on the test to make sure that it is actually working. So this guy here is just a uh, command line application. Um, on the args that you pass in, if you pass in icons, it'll jump into this icon thing class. right? And then this guy down here, what are you doing? Why, why, are, you, why are you missing references? Any NuGet package problems? Go and, go and launch. Figure yourself out. Rebuild. There you go. Um, and so down here, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see, get icons. And this is ultimately where it's building these things up. All right? And I suspect this change here, because we there was a, a change that we put in recently that says go and add a none member 
to the list of icons because enums in general should have um, a default uh, member of none or undefined or etc. Right? Not etc. There there should be a, a default member that indicates nothing. Um, because all enums always have a zeroth member whether you specify one or not. And so the idea was to actually go and define one, which is great. But I'm wondering if in doing this we accidentally um, botched one of these. So I'm kind of interested to go and look at. So uh, let's see. Uh, file. No, what is it? History. Yeah. So icon thing. Show me the history on this file. So that's not it, because that's just an order by. And this is unfortunate, because it says my name on it. Let's see. I don't see. Icons by name. All right, so there's, there's all of these in here that are checking it. And I'm wondering if the subtle problem here is so yeah, there's nothing in here that there's nothing in here that really changed that. I'm wondering if we're just hitting a new case that we haven't seen before. Um, so if we jump back here, right? Because we've got this member here, and this is the nice part about why I put in the the ordering is because now these things are right next to each other. Before they could be any order they wanted to be in. Um, trying to decide because ultimately we're going to have to pick a winner between these two of which one's going to win and I think the answer is I'm going to pick the one with the most capital letters in it. If two things differ by case I probably want the one with the more capital letters. Yeah. So the question is why in all of this stuff so icons by name. Ah, this is probably the change right here, right? So this is this is building this up, but this no longer has the. Da, da, da. Yeah, because I think before it was going through. Yeah, it was relying on this hash set, that was probably. That was probably ordinal ignore case, and now it doesn't have that. So let's do, let's add string uh, comparison. Uh, oh, no, not string comparison. String comparer. Boom. So ignore case. Um, I did go through. Um, Karnak, I discovered, is a new little program that shows in the, the keyboard shortcuts at the top of the screen. So playing with that just to just to see how it goes. Um, I think I'm going to bump that down. Just top offset 10, left offset 10. See how that... Boom. Something like that. So if you're curious what keyboard things I'm pressing, playing around with it, trying to figure out where, where I like it. So, okay, so let's go through and run this guy real quick and see if that fixes our problem. So if we run him, he is going to generate new resources. It'd be nice to go through and update this to the new .NET Core stuff because there's no reason, this is effectively just tool chain stuff. There's no reason it can't be on latest and greatest. Okay, so debug, uh, let's see, command line options, icons, boom. And let's just make sure we we land where we expect and go. Okay, so for starters, there's our window. Decide to open up on the other monitor. Args contains icons. Great. F5, we're just going to let it go. And it should, should run it. Because this is on the uh, Azure DevOps pipeline. Um, this is effectively what it's running. It's just Re reusing this app, generating the code, and then doing some checks in Git to see if it updates new stuff. So this guy should go through and update my local enum, which means then I should be able to go through and um, uh, 
push this change and it should just automatically pick it up. It'll rebase its pull request if there's an existing one. Okay, so that finished. So let's go back to material design. You'll note that other guy disappeared, which is, I think, fine. Yeah, I think that's I think that's uh, probably the correct order. I suspect the material design people will probably clean this up. Usually, in the past, when this has happened, um, the things differing by case get cleaned up uh, before release. So, if not, I'll shoot a message and find out. But usually, those those go away because it's it's not just us where that causes problems. It adds confusion if you've got two icon names that that differ. So, huzzah! That fixes the problem. Okay, rerun all our tests just to make sure we didn't break anything else. Um, while we are in here, there's one more thing while we're making changes um, that I think would be convenient to do. So when it generates this icon, doo -doo -doo, it generates two files. So one, it generates the enum member, right? Um, but then it also generates this this large large dictionary and I and I won't scroll to the right but well here end so I don't know exactly what character I'm over at but that's in the 1.7 million range uh, which for people who get paranoid about length of line I think 1.7 million characters is probably a little too wide so my thought was that uh, this is just a, a dictionary initializer. Let's just put each of these on their own line. That would actually make them um, available to show up in the diff on GitHub too, because right now Git sees this as one big change, um, and GitHub just throws up its hands and goes, I I'm not going to try to render that. So I think if while we're in here making changes to this, let's see about putting each of those initializers on their own line. I think. So um, we actually go through and use the um, analyzers to generate this stuff out. So I'm not entirely sure where this is, but we will add line feeds to commas. Update enum. Here's the list of icons. So where, where do you get invoked from, right? So find usages, pack icon template.cs. Uh, that's pack icon kind uh, right data factory I think the data factory is what we're more interested in right uh, wrong window here we go yeah pack icon data factory that's what I'm that's what I'm interested in looking at so generate da, 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 syntax tree I do wonder seeing new file stream always weirds me out I, of whether this guy's actually closing it or not. Something tells me he's probably not. Probably worth fixing. Um, come back to this. Let's make sure that we're in the right place. So, icon factory syntax rewriter. Let's look at what you do. Okay, so you go through, takes in a list of icons and member access expression this is probably it a little expression string literal string little icon data uh, separated list see we don't need that so clean that up expression syntax and I think what I need is just another syntax right here right Initializer separated syntax list. Uh, complex element initializer expression. Great, great, great. Um, and I think that's all I want, right? Sequence of nodes synthesizing commas operators in between. Um, is there a way I'm a little separated list singleton separated list blah 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 comma separator in between I kind of want a, this guy to be a
I want to just put the new line right after the comma. The problem is if you're going to generate my comma, uh, what do you allow? Show me what's on this. Uh, let's see. Kind, open brace token, expressions, close brace token. Uh, that's fine. That's not quite what I want because this really is just generating everything all the way across. I'm a little surprised you... How would one do this if he... Oh. Separators. Uh, a sequence of separator tokens. Why, look at that. That's exactly what I want. I would like to create some syntax tokens that are comma new line. That's what I want. Okay. So, syntax factory, literal expression, literal expression, uh, let's see, syntax kind, let's do, This is going to be not quite literal expression. I might have to look up the syntax factory for this. Um, let me look real quick because I think there was a sample of this down here. Uh, let's see, create syntax trivia. Add line feeds to commas. Do, do, do. So syndex kind end of line trivia. So okay, so let's see here. So we want an end of line trivia. And I think that's syntax factory. Uh, sorry, I don't know this API, so I'm sort of muddling my way through this. And there's that current enum while replace token current identifier syntax trivialist empty with trailing trivialist elastic carriage return line feed syntax trivialist think this is what I want right so boom which means this guy here Let's see, syntax token. What did you generate? Syntax trivia list. How do we get a syntax token? Syntax token, and it is. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, syntax. Oh boy, I probably shouldn't have picked on something so complicated. Uh, let's see here. There's the syntax trivia. Uh, specified text are used to denote trivia that was not produced by parsing sources and usually not preserved during formatting. Kind of like that. Oh. So 
this is a syntax token this is a I don't want it there, right? So let's see. How does one get through this? Using directive variable, type of trivial list, syntax token. Oh. How about syntax kind? End of line trivia. Uh Bar, end of line, right? There, there. Close that, convert that. Probably would help if I would stop debugging. That would probably do better. So, new array, end of line. Okay, let's run it one more time. Let's see if that actually does what we expect. So that guy comes across. Go and gen me some stuff. Oh, Mountain Dew, I need you tonight. Whew. Okay, so updating the enum and let's take a look at this guy should rev at some point. It does take it a minute since it has to generate both the enum and the um, dictionary from 5,000 members. So, it takes it a minute. Uh, let's see. Syntax token. This method can only be used to create tokens. End of line trivia is not a token kind. Hmm. Don't like this. Uh, so when in doubt, ask the Googles. Syntax token end of line. Uh, line directive with end of line directive syntax token. That might be helpful. Normalize white space syntax extensions class. There's probably useful stuff in here. Boom. End of line. Uh, with regularly formatted trivia, so we don't want normalized white space. That's good to know. Okay. Boom. So that's clearly not it. Uh, end of line. To syntax line. This is going to produce syntax with line line directive syntax. Uh, do not insert new lines into what's probably a single line. Yeah, I do not understand this. They're one of the primary. Let's see, child nodes. Each node has a syntax node. Child nodes. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Tokens and trivia that exist. Right, I'm just looking for the method of if I have a trivia, how do I wrap that in a node? Because I effectively want a node with one thing in it. Uh, da, da, da. Syntax trivia represents the part of the source tree that are largely insignificant for the normal understanding of the code. White space commas. Yep, agreed. Um, can appear anywhere between tokens. Trailing trivia. Yeah, the problem is, is I want. The problem is, is I want. Oh, let's just look at this guy, right? There's probably an overload. He's probably calling into something. I'm guessing this one is doing commas, so I just want to do what he's doing and add a little bit to it. Uh, that is the one with separators. This is the one without separators. 
So enumerate, enumerate, singleton separator. Mm -hmm. Syntax tree, syntax token. So I want this syntax factory token, comma token. Right? So it's adding a separator and then adding in the current item. So this iterates over, adds in all of the separators, and then adds the items. Okay, so this is how they're building up the comma. So we kind of want something like this. Boom, boom, boom. Comma, get. And the problem is, is this guy is unhappy about end of line. Comma, token. And... Uh, how about line, multi-line, comma, trivia, single line, comma, trivia, line, keyword, end of line, trivia. So you're basically telling me you only want to play with tokens. Ampersand, asterisk. Kind of looking for something that was like carriage return. Colon, comma, dollar... End of file. Identifier. Just want to put it on a new line. Why is this so hard? It's probably easier when you know the API, I would imagine. Still the token, XML stuff, so that is end of line trivia. So, comma. Uh, has leading trivia has with with trailing trivia, right? So then I go syntax factory end of line. that um, separator do that do that do that separator go something like that effectively seeing if I can tack on the end of line right at the end of the comma I think that might work we will see because I would like to get this to the point. I've already got some breaking changes around the order of this pack icon going in. And this is one of those, it's, it's always hard for me to decide how strict I want to be on breaking changes when we're talking about visual. Because API changes that are breaking are very objective. Um, visual breaking changes um, are another story entirely. Okay, so that quote unquote worked. But that did not appear to change this data factory in the least, right? That is interesting to me. Separated list. So let's see. Initializer expression. I am wondering if this actually needs to be done out here. All right, so that goes there. This goes here. This becomes new. Um, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quit your whining. I understand. I edited the code while you were running. 
I get it, you're unhappy. Oh boy. I made the mistake of trying to take a 30 minute cat nap earlier and the 30 minute cat nap turned into an hour. Oh, I think it was my body telling me, you are tired, you need sleep. So I should probably be doing that, but I really wanted to get some of this coding stuff in. It's one of those things, it was, whenever I feel like things are falling behind, it just starts to uh, grate on me until I get around to fixing it. It is not a good thing. Not a good thing. Let's see, value did not fall with inside expected range. So, let's see. Comma, yeah. Leading trivia empty. Trailing trivia has something in there, right? Like the span and one length is zero seems a little bit weird. Argument does not fall with inside the expected range. Show me something interesting. So this really is the initializer expression. So this this is the one that I really want to put separated, right? Like I don't want this comma to be the one that we do. Okay, so this This guy goes like this. Uh, let's see, separated list. So this is probably calling the wrong overload, I'm guessing, because this is expression syntax. Uh, no, that properly switches over and calls the expression syntax overload. And the separators. with each of these so because all you're doing is putting together syntax list builder iterate 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 add items in for each separator and separators tack in the separator the guy up here does effectively the same thing only he's got the separator token of the comma which is exactly what we have except for we cheated and added in uh, one extra bit on the end of the comma which I'm not a hundred percent confident actually is doing what I want right so syntax token list parse token It's going to be, I, I feel like new lines should not be hard. Let's go j back over here, right? So how is this guy effectively doing it? Um, trailing trivia, looking for end of line trivia. So what is this, what is this guy doing? So he's grabbing all child nodes and tokens where it is a token, select it as a token, and then grab the first token where the value is equal to a comma and the token has does not have trailing space or the token's trailing space is not end of line or is yeah it is not an end of line so while we do this while this is not equal to none this guy goes through and calls replace token and swaps out this for trailing trivia list syntax identifier let's see leading is empty text is comma syntax identifier gives me a ha 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 I want you I think I want you 
Come here. So I want trailing trivia list. Uh, let's see, trailing trivia list looks like this. Do, 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 do. do, do. Alright. I think what we do here is we change this out for comma dot text, right? Because I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily be hard coded there. And I think that works. Let's try it. I'm wondering if the expectation is that. Check this real quick while that's running. Um, if the number of separators is needing to be equal to the number of nodes. So let's see, what does it do? For each separator and separators, uh, numerator, so it manually iterates the nodes, adds a separator. Oh, it does look like that's the case, doesn't it? trying to read this because then it comes back around value does not fall within the expected range so let's just look yeah argument exception so we're hitting one of these right we're calling move next and we don't have one so how do we want to go about doing this I think we just want to let's see so I think this is really I just need separators equal to the end of this oh, man I wish there was a way to just tell it to repeat I guess we can do a numerable repeat right but that requires me to have a count which I don't I don't know on uh, up front right Hate to listing this, but I, th I, I think that in the, so. There's too many ways to do this. So, what we do is we come down here and we say, here's the guy I want. I need the number of. I'm doing separators, so I need the number of items less one, right? So repeat this item. Uh, syntax list count minus one. That probably gets us pretty close. Because I'd love to push this up. Um, I don't think I'm going to actually change the other files. I'm going to just wait for the pipeline to run tonight and let it do it just to make sure everything's kosher. And then we'll see what happens. Done. So, did you change my file? Hey, that looks better. So, now we're down here. I kind of feel like I'd love to get a little fancier now that I've got this figured out. Shove in some spacing. Am I getting too greedy? I'm getting greedy. Let's keep. Let's let's do. Let's do a little better little better right so I kinda wonder if we just cheat and do it with interpolated strings right so bunch of spaces that would get it equal this goes here let's let's just look at the file what would what would I want right like so if I were to indent this manually to maybe 12, three tabs worth of space. Actually, what happens if I auto format the document? Nothing. 
Okay, let's go all the way to the bottom. Is there a... What's the semicolon? Oh, because it's a... Uh, mm -hmm. Lambda body member, it doesn't need one. No, there should be one. This will be at the end of the... Here, there's a semicolon. And we'll pause while resharpen Visual Studio. Think about trying to format a 5,000 line document. Hopefully it doesn't take them too long to figure it out. While that's thinking, one, two, three, four. Nope, that one. Yep, still thinking. Take your time, guys, take your time. But I think we might end up doing something like this, right? Just get a reasonable formatting in place. Initializer expression. Get initialize our items because these are the individual items. This gets a separated list. Yeah, it's probably fine. Right? That's probably fine. Still thinking, huh? Might just have to kill Visual Studio. Clearly, formatting that big of a document is outside its purview. Though it's hard to say if that's Visual Studio or ReSharper to blame. Try this real quick. As long as this generates correctly correctly, right? We'll see how it goes. Then we'll just push it. So let's see. Don't need you, don't need you, don't need you, don't need you, don't need you. Uh, take me back to GitHub. There's that. Okay, so are there any pull requests still sitting out here? This one and this one are both outstanding for 3.1.0. Let's see about getting this one, I think. Uh, let's see, so this uh, adds more design time errors to the mobs file. I don't know why the copy button is not working here. Okay, so we'll probably start with a simple rebase on this guy. I'm wondering if this file should get refactored, but that's probably fine. It's calling the init. Be interesting to look and see what's wonder why we need this, right? Well, we we will check it out cuz I'd like to get some of the some of those files merged. Uh oh. Turns out when you close it, it gets closed. What a shock. There we go. So there's that. So there's our enum member. Let's check our data factory. Hmm. Didn't auto format. Didn't indent. Interesting. So clearly that does nothing. Identifier. Wonder if this leading trivia needs to have something in here. You know what? I'm going to call it good enough for now um, and not waste too much more time on this. If somebody wants to figure out how to indent this properly, that would be cool. Because I would love it if this file didn't quite look like this, but at least in this form, um, as diffs come through, we'll be able to actually have a reasonable diff on this file. Because um, even, the, even the long ones, right, are not overly long. Oh. Haha. <laughs> 
it put the spaces there before the comma rather than before the item right so the spacing doesn't need to go here um, we probably need some sort of literal item here right member access expression blah 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 this is actually probably well we're right here uh, indent because this is going to be the same as this guy up here where it went syntax trivia list right so leading trivia uh, ba -ba -ba. this guy goes here Remember access expression about with leading trivia, leading trivia list, right? So something like that. Let me rename this to indent. Last run. I promise. Except for when you realize that you indented the wrong number of spaces. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Boom. Try that. Let that run, and we will get out all the items. Yeah, because this will be nicer to be able to look at this in GitHub as the changes come through. Not that I can really read the path changes but it provides a little bit of a sanity check to know if um, some major change is coming to one of these icons because it would be helpful right now there's not a great way for me to know if there are visual changes to any of these um, I just know if hmm, I put it in front of the curly brace rather than after promised one last one. I feel like I'm so close. Because this is the separated syntax list. This is the items inside the curly braces. This is the initializer expression. This should be the one that we want indented, I think. Because I believe the initializer expression translates to effectively from here to here. So I think that's what we want. It is very interesting to dive into how the compiler views your source code and how even little things like indent make a big difference. Boom. So that bumps over. This one isn't quite right. I'd love to get some new lines between the opening one and the closing one. Right now, that's a two character change. Not overly concerned about it, right? So we're going to go through and push this and get this in because I would like to have this available. So let's just let us come over here. So we're going to throw away these changes, discard all changes in folder because we really only want the resource gen. And flip to master, uh, let's see, create branch, fix, resource gen. Boom, stage all changes, fixing issue with icons, differing only by case, uh, let's see, fixed uh, white space on icon factory file, Do -do -do. sure, fine, commit, and push, and submit, go out to GitHub and we're going to come back over here, compare and pull request and 
put this guy in here, and I think I'm going to label him an enhancement. Kind of a bug, too. So, put them both on there. Great pull request. And then we're going to let this guy sit and churn for a moment, because I do want to verify that the CI system agrees with me that this fixes the bug. So, um, I guess it doesn't matter. The CI doesn't verify this project. Squash and merge it is. Boom. Done. There, because the CI wouldn't even validate that it compiles. Probably should fix that. The the nightly pipelines will check those um, when it does the icon updates if those projects fail to compile. But oh well. Okay, so back over to this guy. So let's take a look at this. So pull request fourteen ninety seven. So back down here, pull request fourteen ninety seven. Uh, let's actually pull master down real quick and then yeah go ahead and check that out and I think what we're going to end up doing is starting because this has a bunch of changes here 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 uh, let's see that revved up to 472 that's fine that's the packet reference that's fine button dock I'm wondering if this well okay so let's let's start with the first case right so we're gonna go through we'll rebase it onto master um, just to make sure that uh, let's see here so what are you telling me that this file was deleted um, Marcus conflict. Why? I'm file was deleted. Oh, there we go. That was that was weird. I not used to seeing it like this. Okay, so we have numeric markdown. So this guy we're gonna need to do some changes to, right? So we want to bring this change in. Actually, let's do this line by line. So I want to do this. I want to do this. Then I want to do the closing one. I want to do the opening tag here. Uh, let's see. I then want to pick up this guy here, and then the closing tag here. And then we'll just fix the indent. One, two, three, four. And then fix the indent. One, two, three, four only one of one conflict save should be hello continue rebase please want to mark conflict as resolved not mark conflicted Right, like I th believe this is this is as anticipated. Right, uh, I want rebase continue. Resolve files. Get crack in. What's going on? Why why am I stuck? Conflicted file zero, resolved files one. You're scoring low points with me tonight and get cracking. Um do, do, do. that is not a good thing. Okay, so uh, let's go uh, CD dev, CD material design, that one, uh, get, please continue. Bug built in rebase dash C unhandled rebase type. Huh? 
color me confused. Get status. You are currently all conflicts fixed. Run get rebase continue. That's what I tried to do. Changes to be committed. Whoa. Okay. So something is very, very wrong. Let's try to abort the rebase. Oh look, now we've got something interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so stage, stage. I think we continue rebase. Skip commit, skip commit. Needs refresh, cannot create property holy cow holy cow um abort okay so that did not go well <laughs> i think that's what we can conclude from that okay so let's try this one more time let's check our working changes get ourselves back in a clean state throw everything away throw everything away and let's Let's just make darn sure Visual Studio doesn't get in our way for anything. Right? Let's. I know I've got the source control plugin turned off, but. Uh, ignore all, right? Just shut down. Ignore. Just, just shut down. Don't think for yourself, Visual Studio. Close. I don't want you doing anything fancy. We're going to try this one more time. Okay, so rebase onto master. There are merge conflicts. Great. Okay, so this looks, this is already looking better. So there, 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 and there. And then we do the same indent. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four save great we've got an issue here of 472 and net core I think we definitely want to pick that up okay continue rebase okay that was much easier than it should have been right that's that's how hard it was supposed to be get cracking I do not know how we got into that state I can only conclude that you and Visual Studio are fighting over files. I have noticed that, that if you have more than one thing touching your Git repo or monitoring your Git repo, bad stuff occasionally happens. Okay, so set a startup project. So this, this, this might be this simple, right? So let's compile and run. It probably has to restore the universe because it was confused beyond all get out. And that could have been too. Because we reverted to a pull request that was on an old version of packet that didn't have .NET Core 3.1, I wonder if that, that was causing Visual Studio to reload some stuff. Maybe? Because there are some background processes that um, the design time builds kick off. And I know packets t wired into those. So maybe that was the problem. Maybe it was just Visual Studio's background processes running and stuff getting stuck. Not mind. So rebuild. Let's launch this demo and see how it works. Oh boy. Could not build material design colors. File is locked. By who? So let's close and relaunch because the most likely explanation is Visual Studio is blocking itself. And I'm just going to quickly scan for MS Build processes just to make sure everything that I think died really did die. Oh, there is a stray one. 
Okay. Kill that real quick. Pre-launch. Okay, sorry. That was Task Manager on my other screen. Um, just hunting straight processes. Occasionally when you terminate Visual Studio, processes get left open. It's unfortunate. But when you forcefully terminate things, bad states are bound to happen. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jet translation requires your attention. Okay, so I need it. I need to go through and give it my updated JetBrain subscription. Okay, fine. I'll deal with that. Deal with that later. Okay, build succeeded. Let's launch. What do you mean? Set a startup project. Launch. Not asking for a lot. Okay, so. Property path is not valid. Controls helper does not. Oh. Ouch. So this is a bug we fixed before. Um, which means I probably just accidentally reverted it. Um, either that or it got brought in. I don't think it would have been brought in on this. Shouldn't be there. Could very easily be here. All right, because there was a change to some attached properties. Do, do, do. See that guy got pulled up. Where is the, because it was control helper. I don't see you. Why do I not see you? I expected to find it here. There's a text box helper, but we pulled our latest one, so that shouldn't do it. Mm, might have another bug in the Ma Apps project. Let's just launch that and look a little closer at the air. Okay, so uh, controls helper does not have a header margin property, so we're just going to hunt that guy. What did we botch? Because it is a a very real possibility. Uh, let's see. My apps fly out. I could have sworn we fixed this. Right? Because it's uh, fly out. What is it? Uh, my apps colon fly out assist. Right, and then you are what have the header margin on it, right? No. What was it? So there was a change that was control helper. So the header margin. Uh, what was it? Header control helper. Header control helper. Header margin. Right, something, something like that. Okay, let's look at those other find results. Yeah, so header control margin, header control margin, header control margin. So basically, I must not have updated all of them. Because this is in the shared library down here. I would not have expected this to break. But, so this guy here, the so one thing I'm not seeing is the show me the XAML stuff. So we're going to have to check that out. There's that, there's that, that's fine. Oh, there they are. So they are, they are there. So this guy here, copy. So the copy button isn't working, and that was the other bit. The other bit to this. So let's go and take a quick look. This is an app.xaml where we style this guy out. So the copy button going to be inside the pop-up command copy binding XAML relative source templated parent so why would you not have XAML when this guy clearly is being bound to it 
right? Because I assume this probably is pretty much identical to this guy down here. F.saml, let's go and look. So, tag XAML, what is this tag being used for? Relative source templated parent. So this is going into there. So, doo -doo -doo. that cleans that up on the formatter. Text value converter. Great, 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 great. Style. So the expectation is that this guy automatically sets the XAML property. Let's let's take a closer look at this guy, right? Because this should be working. So when in doubt, fire up our old pal Snoop. Crosshairs onto the app that we care about. The crosshairs next to the binocular, by the way. So Snoop dock to that side. App dock to this side, I think. And then the magical button is Control Shift when you put your mouse over the thing that you want to look at. In our case, we're going to just dive down here into this button. So I'm very interested. The command parameter has stuff, right? So what is going on and why is this different? Oh, I bet you I know why. This is almost assuredly a, there is, this is probably because there's a command binding. Yeah, this line right here. So this is this is the reason why it's not working because it's a routed command and there's nothing actually wiring up that routed command to any sort of action. So on our main window, we're just gonna come, yeah, sure, right at the top. Boom, and we will do that. And then down here on our main window code behind, this is what actually executes the copy. Boom, boom, boom. Some people have done fancy attach commands and whatnot to avoid effectively doing this. I just do it in the code behind because, frankly, it's easier. Boom. So uh, import, import, stop execution. Right? And we suppress clipboard errors because we don't care. Log the exception. The Occasionally, the clipboard just doesn't respond quick enough. So if you like to spam this set data object repeatedly, go boom. So if we come down here and click, copy, I don't know, notepad sounds great. Um, paste, we got our text. Great. That's what we want. Okay, so we fix that, we fix that, we fix that. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Let's push it. Because this is demo app stuff, so not completely do 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 yeah so uh rebased on master and fixed conflicts uh fixed uh control helper attached property in my apps uh let's see and what else do we do Fixed copy button on show me the XAML pop up. Okay, so there's that. I think the one other thing I want to do is that, that we've got a lot of code duplication going on right now. And I'm wondering if I want to try and actually just share some of that across. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Because I'm contemplating refactoring the style that's inside of this app.xaml 
into a resource dictionary and file linking it into both of these. Yeah, we'll leave them separate for now. It, it would be a worthwhile refactor, um, and I would not, I would not turn down a pull request with that in there. So we're going to force push our commit in as well, and we'll let the CI check that. Um, so if anybody wanted to go through and fix that, I would not be opposed to it. Um, it would be nice to avoid the duplication. Something tells me that maybe we should style it maybe a little differently, put a little MoApps flare on it. Um, since we're in our MyApps demo app, maybe. Nah. Okay. So there's that. Don't need that. Uh, let's see. Don't need that. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see. Turn that off, and that's all good still. Okay. So let's go and look at another one. One pull request down. Uh, let's see what else is tagged in here. Uh, let's see support. Oh, so this one is one that's outstanding, I believe, right? Because I believe I push changes. Uh, you'll notice the background is transparent. Not currently sure. Oh, that's right. This is this is the one that we need to change um, to not have it be transparent. Maybe we bite this one off real quick. It's only 1016. And I still have half a can of Mountain Dew. That's good enough. Okay, so we'll bite this off. Because um, we know what needs to be done to fix this. So let's see, 942, probably... So I'm going to close Visual Studio real quick just so it doesn't doesn't freak out with what I'm about to do. So 942... Uh, let's see, because this shows both, yada, yada, yada. This is only back a little bit, so let's do uh, rebase onto master. Okay, so we got all the latest stuff now. Okay, so let's fire this guy up and reacquaint myself with the issue. I'm, I'm fairly confident I remember. So we switch demo apps, go over here, launch. Close all documents. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I'll take care of you later, Resharper. You'll be fine. I promise. Description subscribe two fourteen. Oh, so this is just expired. Oh, last Friday. Okay. There were build errors. Why are there build errors? <sighs> build again. Try again, Visual Studio. Come on, you can do it, I promise. Build failed. Okay. You just get so confused when I do those rebases, don't you? Uh, let me just see. Do we have stray processes again? Uh, da, 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 da. Look at that. There you are again. Nuke. Okay, and back to the project. I'm very close to writing a script to just go through and nuke all those processes for me. Okay, let's try another build. It is kind of nice seeing the, the keyboard shortcuts up there. I don't know if people actually like that or if they find that helpful. So if you do, let me know. I'm probably going to keep it, I think. Seems like it's nice. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. Okay, so that guy's up. Build failed. Seriously? How is build failed zero errors? You are you are not helping me tonight, Visual Studio. I 
don't know what to tell you. Okay, so uh, color zones. So this guy down here, there's this. I thought we had left ourselves. Thought we had left ourselves an example, right? Or is this the working one and it's back over in the fields that is the problem child? Uh, this all appears to be working. Was it when we switched into dark mode was the problem? Uh, let's see. that appears to be fine. What's going on? I mean obviously we have the, the age-old problem of the combo boxes but I'm confused as to where... ah there it is. This one, right? So you can see how this guy's sort of fading through. Uh, I not have zoom it running? Zoom it. So expand. So if we look closely, right, you can see how that is. Um, how ultimately this text here, you can see the sum text in the background kind of floating through. So the problem being that the 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 pop up of this guy is getting set to transparent, and the reason is because it's using a theme brush, and the theme brush has an alpha. Um, being applied to it, which in most cases doesn't matter, right? Uh, but in this particular case does. So let's, first of all, actually we can just look at the XAML behind this guy, right? Ooh, I do not like the way that new icon looks. This is almost invisible on dark mode. We'll have to deal with that. Um, so color zone assist mode inverted, right? So it lets you um, invert the, the default coloring. So this guy is going to be backwards but when it picks up that alternate theme brush, it's problematic. Okay, so how do we fix it? So um, I believe there's a fancy algorithm. Uh, convert RGBA to RGB. Uh, something, 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 right? Uh, so uh, let's see. Ba -ba -boom. Uh, something like this could do the trick. Background. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to draw. Um, this doesn't look like the one that I saw before. Let's keep going back. Uh, move alpha channel from RGBA because the the f functional problem actually I guess that does work right is you have to pick a background uh, da, 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 that's let's jump back I think that's actually I think I misspoke because you do care about the background right like if the background here ends up being white so choose right the color that gets shown through needs to be here. So we have to make a decision on what the background's going to be, and I think we just go with white rather than black. We're going to try it and see what happens. Um, and we might need to just do it uh, uh, we might need to do it in based on the theme that you're in. So we'll see. Uh, so let's see. Remove alpha uh, brush converter. Sounds fine. I'm trying to decide. I, I think for now, um, I'm going to let people tell me if they think this would be helpful. But in general, I've been making things like this internal because I, I'm not spending a lot of time reviewing the API for these and so I'm not confident it's what I want to support so if somebody tells me otherwise and says no this is something we want I think it's probably worthwhile reviewing so if value is 
solid color brush uh, brush without a D right so return finding do nothing okay and then I don't think we can do anything here right I think this is, has to be a one-way binding yeah I think it has to be a one-way binding um, so I think what we're gonna do is something like var background gets uh, parameter as color how about this color background gets colors white right so we're gonna default to white I think um, if parameter is color background gets color so we'll we'll let it be overridden by the parameter so default to white override with a parameter and then math 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 so it's basically this so we'll just uh, let's just put it in a separate method so private static color RGBA to RGB uh, color RGBA right and paste so uh, so RGBA we're gonna just change both of you. So this becomes uh, R G B and then I think we need to do color background which means this becomes a little easier. Boom 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 boom. Drop that. It becomes R G B uh, and this is actually not going to be new color, it's going to be color from RGB, right? So we're going to just convert that across. Now what is alpha coming in as? Alpha is RGB color A. So var alpha gets RGBA dot... Hey, come on, give me an alpha. Boom! Okay, so uh, cannot convert from int to byte. So this is one minus alpha. I am a little questioning here. So uh, is alpha expected to be a value? So this alpha is expected to be a value from zero to one we are not a value from 0 to 1. All right? So let's let's fix that. Yeah, byte uh, divided by all Right? So if alpha is all the way up, this goes to 1. Otherwise, boom. Uh, to possible loss of fraction, sure. We'll upcast you, right? So that'll get us a value from zero to one. Okay. Next problem: cannot convert from double to byte. So this is now one minus this. Um, this implicitly is double times byte, which upcast to a double which this is all fine, right? So the multiplication is all going to happen first, then they're going to get added together. But ultimately now we need to force these all down to bytes. So, right? Uh, and actually, I think what we want is this, and we want this. All right, so force that in. Okay, so then we're going to go here. Turn new 
solid color brush and we're gonna go RGBA kinda wondering there, there might be a we might want to do a fancy short circuit here right um, so let's go with brush dot color to uh, we'll take the background color and something like that great okay so let's go and hunt real quick because I don't quite remember where this is text field assist that ain't it uh, duh, 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 duh. that's an underline brush combo box Alright, so let's do, do, do. yeah these lines here so combo box around 640 is functionally the problem uh, let's see here so let's go take a look at that design themes uh, nope I am in the wrong project again. Down lower. Themes combo box. Somewhere around 640. About in here. 63040. Part background. So this is where this problem is gonna start, right? So specifically, let's just show me all of these. Uh, bu -bu -bu, because these are all effectively setting the the background and I think I don't necessarily know if I want to go through and just eliminate all I don't think I just want to eliminate all of these so let's go let's go up and look at the template real quick uh, let's see background element name blah 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 this is just forwarding it down into there okay so let's look you what is using this tag property because I'm somewhat tempted to cheat right because I I sort of want to bind with the source being a dynamic resource and so usually what you do is you attach that guy in here so kind of want to look at what is combo box background fall back brush so we've already got fall back brush converter so what are you doing exactly so falling back to the first brush that isn't okay jump so that so we we need to do something different here, right? Cuz he's ultimately picking this up and this is largely being overridden by stuff happening. So is that on, the only place where tag is being used? Material design paper. Condition tag. Uh, that's on the wrong thing. That's on the wrong thing. So yeah, it's really only being used for this fallback brush converter. But these guys down here are overriding that guy by just placing a new value on background. I'm thinking what I'd rather do think about this for a moment is change this out because I think I can leave this here right the problem being is I need a uh, these are control triggers I need a way to change this correctly So let's uh, let's just do the inverted one first, right? So this we're going to change this guy to go to tag. 
we're going to do another setter here. Actually, I can just do right. Um, no, leave that for me, please. And so this becomes background, and then this value becomes binding relative source. Uh, let's actually put you on a separate line, right? Relative source self. Uh, let's see, this is going to be path will be to the tag, and then we'll throw a converter on the end, and we need our static resource. Um, let's go up here to our converters, and we want the uh nope where did we put that converter oh we put that in the wrong project let's just you come out and we need you down in here paste and which means you need to have a different namespace please thanks save come over here Boom, remove alpha brush converter, and then we'll jump back down to here. Okay, let's test this and see, and verify that this works. Before we get too crazy. Uh, let's see. Uh, what did I mess up? Do I have the wrong number of curly braces? So let's see, that closes the converter, that closes the binding, that's not needed. Try again. So the, the basic pattern here is we want the source of the binding to be a dynamic resource, um, but the, the source property on the binding can't accept a dynamic resource. So what we do is we put that dynamic resource into another dependency property, in this case the, the tag property, because it's sort of a, a grab bag one. Um, and then we do a binding between the tag property and the background property that we care about because then we can attach a converter to it in the middle so that is the the big idea so we'll flip you over to dark mode and then let's come down here to fields 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 fields, fields. and this guy here right so transparency gone I think that's probably what we want. Let's flip that color tool back um, because I'm interested to see what it looks like when the background is not set to white. Yeah, I think using white as the default background and just stripping that off is probably going to work great. So let's go down here and basically on all of these background ones where it's being set to a dynamic resource we want to pretty much change it up to do this All right so uh, let's see because if we're going to do this we pretty much always want for the purposes of our cases we want this to just work okay so this becomes target property tag right that is, sorry, just trying to make sure I did this right. So this becomes the target property for tag with the dynamic resource. This becomes the binding, just works. Okay, come down here. We've already done this one. This one is not on the thing that we care about, not on the thing we care about. Uh, don't care about that. Keep coming down, keep coming down. Underline, underline, underline. This one we care about. Paste. This becomes tag. Right? I'm thinking I'm going to move this back up onto a single line just so that these all look the same. Let's see here. Paste. This becomes tag. And this doesn't completely stop a transparent background from occurring, right? Because people can change out 
can ultimately just set the background of the pop-up to something with an alpha if they want. Um, and my general policy is I, I let I like to give people enough um, rope to be able to do things that m I would consider incorrect, but as soon as I make a rule that says you can't, somebody finds a use case where they really, really want to. So we just try to let that let that happen as much as possible. Um, but I do try to make it so that the easy path is the right path. right? So until you need to do something really fancy, all the basic easy stuff just works. Okay. Okay, so I think that handles those cases. Perfect. Go here, go here, go here. Uh, fixed issue of transparent uh, pop-up backgrounds. Commit changes, push, force push since we rebased, and away we go and then we'll let the CI pick that one up. So let's let's just go back to our pull request, refresh and see. So this guy got completed. Great. Squash merge. This guy's already set. Uh, we'll mark this as an enhancement since it does make make the Ma apps one a little bit cleaner. Poof, done. Um, and just for people's general edification, my usual policy is to go through and um, uh, do pull requests before issues, uh, just because that's, uh, I, I just tend to think that those are, are usually the more um, interesting ones. If somebody's put in the effort to submit a pull request, um, it's probably a uh, higher priority than somebody who just logged an issue. I know that's not 100% accurate, um, but it's sort of the best uh, reference point I have to go on. So, leave a comment here. Fixed the transparent pop up background. Boom. So, we'll just comment there. Once the CI system picks that up, that'll be done. Okay, let's take a look. What else we got? So that's going to be done next time around. Text field character counter. That's right. This one required a bigger review. It's already 1043. I'm thinking what I might do is I might call it there for th tonight. I'm going to wait for wait for this guy to finish chugging just so I can merge him in and I think I will I will call it there. Um I would say that I'm hopeful that I'm going to go through and and get to more of the 3 uh, 310 issues this week, but quite frankly, with all of the stuff going on with my son, I suspect my time is going to be very limited. So, um, if people would like to take a, a crack at any of the 310 issues, um, I would very much appreciate. There's a bunch of these bugs here. Again, I'm not guaranteeing that these bugs get fixed, I'm just guaranteeing that they get looked at before the release goes out the door, um, just so that we can try and address these. This one here is an interesting one. Um, because it's the the design the the change that we put in um, follows the the design for material design, but the spec that they have um, appears to only uh, cover light theme and not dark theme. And so the question is, what should this look like in dark theme? And then we need to change this accordingly. So um, at a minimum, if somebody wants to even just take a crack at figuring out what should this look like. I mean, obviously, how light it is now is not quite acceptable, and we need to do better. Um, but before, we weren't using the theme colors. It was just going to gray. So that, that was functionally the change. We switched from going to gray to using the theme colors like the spec calls for. Um, but now in dark theme, they look horrible. So they need to look better, and I honestly don't know what the correct answer is. So if somebody wants to throw out some suggestions of what they think correct should look like, I would love to look at that. So it's easy for me to suggest how to implement it if we figure out what that uh, needs to do. Um, some of these other ones, let's just take a quick peek. So the, the rich text box, there's been a bunch of issues logged around it um, where it's been showing errors and issues here. 
Um, and so this one might be an interesting one to tackle. It looks like there's probably just some internal margin problems, I think. Uh, the fact that I'm seeing the scroll bar get cut off here. Um, the line is expected, right? Like that's that's what I expect to see, but the scroll bar looking like this seems like something's something's off and I don't quite know what it is. So it would be worth um, diving through that to figure out where that goes. Um, I think there was a bunch of discussion on this one. Um, yeah, this one is basically just around the way that we did the bindings here. Um, there's some discussion in here and Magnus has a, a very good suggestion of basically how to solve it is don't don't bind into the actual floating offset Y or X properties um, effectively just bind into the floating offset and let the converter pull the correct property because when you bind into here um, and I believe there's uh, the docs here actually do a good explanation of why this memory leak occurs um, and the short version is don't bind to stuff that's not bindable that's the short version um, so we probably just need to change this this guy up here to be like this and memory leak goes away uh, uh, this one here is probably just a bit of a review we we changed a bunch of the font sizes and I kind of wanted to look at this real quick because we we literally just had this open Let's pop this open one more time. Is these font sizes were very? Uh, we did a bunch of font work, and clearly some defaults are off, or these things are setting weird values. So uh, let me look. I surprised I didn't notice it, but yeah, no, this is this is very true. So you'll notice this hint is huge, not as huge, huge, not as huge, huge. And I think the, the correct fix on this one is these huge ones need to basically go back to where they were, right? We did some changes for fonts that bump some stuff up, and there's probably either something being inherited or not inherited. And I think we just need to default them back down to this this same size, matching kind of the, the hint size of whatever OS and the fruit one is here, and not have this big stuff here, right? Obviously, the large font example, this is expected, right? If you go through and set the font to some big size, you know, you set font to 24 and set a floating scale, right? Like, that's expected. Um, but these other ones, uh, these big ones are not as expected. So those ones just need to get cleaned up and figure out what what is causing them because this is, this is what they they should be. So they should all kind of be you know, roughly the same size as these ones. And again, this is probably a bug and something that's just being inherited down that uh, didn't think about. Okay, so I'm going to fix the title on this. And let's see, clear, clear, clear. Save, that goes there, that goes there. Squash merge, squash merge. And I would appreciate people's feedback on this um, of if this is helpful and correct. This does kind of change the potential behavior of combo boxes, um, but because it's behind an attached property, it shouldn't break existing stuff. Um, so just uh, let me know if there's any issues there. So with that, I think I'm going to sign off for the night and say thank you very much. Um, like I said, hopefully I'd love to get to stuff more, um, but it's probably it might end up waiting until my stream next week. So, but. The good news is the 310 stuff is getting down a lot lower. I am going to try to get to this code review here because I think this is an interesting one to try and get in. Um, and I need, to, I need to be able to devote enough time to it because um, it does require some, some focused attention. So have a good night. Happy coding. We'll see everyone again next time.